Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to This is Maria. Today, we're talking about the color black. We're going to walk through the properties of the color. We're going to walk through the energetic magic, shall we say, behind it. I find that in spirituality, a lot of people stay away from working with the color black and its energies. And today, I wanted to offer a glimpse into the energy of the black ray, the energy of the black flame, and how you can use it in your spiritual practice to further your soul development and evolution. Before we get started, before we dive in, just a couple of housekeeping items. If you're not meditating with me on our sacred universe, I wholeheartedly invite you to do so. That is my other podcast, um, Our Sacred Universe. Yeah. It is a heart-filled space. It's a very healing space. If you love meditation, if you love guided meditation, I'm sure you're going to enjoy that one. Secondarily, if you're new to my channel, if you're new to my podcast, I have a book out. Um, it's called 72 Keys to Manifestation or an Ancient Path from a Modern Day Alchemist. So if you have been wondering about how to dive deeper with me, especially since I do not offer any courses as of right now or any ways to work with me directly, you may enjoy the book a lot. So the book is about manifestation. It's all about how you can create and manifest your best life yet. But really, it is a spiritual journey um, that is meant to be lived over the course of 72 days. So every day there is a new chapter, um, a new learning, a new truth for you to practice. Um, the book is available through Kindle, Amazon, and Audible. All righty, my darlings, why don't we dive into the magic of the color black? Before we do, though, let me take a step back. There is so much misconception around the color black on the face of planet Earth. There is, especially like as it relates to spirituality. Granted, enough of you guys wear it, especially in urban settings. It's not like you shy away from wearing black. But you do shy away from what the black represents or what you believe it represents, right? Um, historically, culturally, the black has come to represent the darkness in as in evil, quote unquote, on, on, on this planet. And while, you know, it is what it is, right? Like we can't necessarily go against the um, collective consciousness here. There's so much more to color black than meets the eye. There's so much more to it than just this pure evil that some of you imagine it to be. And so uh, today I figured I would offer a little bit of a deeper dive into the color black and what it is meant to represent, what it represents energetically. Black is a multifaceted color. Um, there are shades of black. Um, there are black varietals energetically. However, if I were to give you like a broad um, systematic way of thinking about um, the color, you should think of black as having two major states. The state that is nothing and the state that is everything. Uh, let's maybe deal with a state that is nothing first. Black is the color of um, essentially the vacuum. And I don't mean vacuum in a scientific sense, right? I don't mean the vacuum the way that you imagine it, but energetic vacuum. Meaning, if you took, um, like, let's call it a cube, of, of um, matter or like a material world, um, some measure of time-space reality and sucked all life out of that and sucked all particles of energy out of that. What you would have remaining would be nothing and that nothing or no thing would be represented by color black. This type of black is perhaps, like this type of black is perhaps not the color that you would want to work with um, on a day-to-day -day basis, because this one is more for zeroing things out, right? So if you want to suck something dry, or if you want to take the power out of something, the black that is nothing, that type of facet, that facet of black is actually really, really good at absorbing and taking things in. But it's not a very resourceful color. As in, if you're working with a facet of black that is nothing, you should not be expecting it to be a resourceful color for you. As in, it likes to take, but it doesn't like to give. So that is one facet of the color black that you should be concerned with. The second aspect of the color black, which is what we're going to devote most of this um, podcast episode to, is fascinating from the energy perspective. 
It is fascinating from the perspective of what can be done with it. It is a very versatile color and it is a very versatile energy. In fact, it is the energy of everything. So if you took every single aspect of reality, every single energy that you could possibly ever think of or you could possibly ever come up um, and try to stash that into a cube, that cube would be color black, not color white. There is this misconception almost on planet Earth that white or light, rather the color of light, um, is the essentially the, the congruence or the combination of all colors. Um, the answer is not so quick, right? Because, you know, yes, there is the rainbow spectrum that when combined together produces white light, quote unquote, or just light. Um, what you guys would refer to as light. At the same time, the rainbow, last time I checked, does not contain any of the colors of the gray spectrum. So the rainbow does not contain any of the grays, any of the blacks, you know. So in, in, what I'm saying is the rainbow is limited, right? It does not represent every single color, but the color black does. So the color black is a very, very rich territory. Energetically, it stands for uh, the energy of all thing, the energy of all matter. L stands for the energy of antimatter itself, right? Antimatter being the precursor to matter, right? So black is actually the everything color. It contains every facet, every particle, every fractal of energy you could ever possibly think of. And I mean the full range, from the lightest to the darkest, from the most loving to the least loving, like black has it all. Because of that, Black is actually used in creation very, very often by um, beings of higher power. Is black the only color of creation? Absolutely not. But because black is the precursor to everything, literally any color of the rainbow or any color in existence can be extrapolated or quote unquote created out of the black void or the dark void. Divine Mother, the female face of source, uses black um, as the means um, of her creative powers, right? So very often the masculine face of source, actually, the Divine Father, would create with uh, color gold. Gold actually represents life. Uh, whereas the Divine Mother would very often create with the color of black. Uh, that is the arsenal, right? That, that she resorts back to when she wants to create something. Um, Neither one of these is better or worse than the other. It's just like there are diff different facets, different energies that you can use to create things. Um, I will also tell you that if we are referring to the whole yin-yang um, symbology, right? Black in Eastern cultures uh, of, of planet Earth has been associated with femininity. Um, black does not have a gender. It gets genderless um, as an energy. Black has just as many feminine facets as it does the masculine. Same thing goes for white. White has just as many feminine facets as a color as it does masculine. So thinking of a color as belonging to a gender is actually a very limited and limiting way of looking at existence. It limits you around um, your perception. And because of that, it limits your potential and so today, I almost want to invite you <laughs> to start from a clean slate, to almost forget some of the things that you think you know about color and uh, give black a chance, right? So let's look at the energies of black and what does it, you know, what are some of the properties? Um, energetically, black stands for the accumulation of power. It also stands for the power itself. And I don't mean power in a negative way, like I win, you lose type of power, but power as in strength, power as in ability to impact change uh, or have impact, power as in might, um, power as in essentially um, a facet of creation, right? An ability to create things, an ability to manifest things, an ability to make things happen. All of those things live within the color black. Black is also a very healing color. Um, it is healing, perhaps not like color gold or not like color white or not like color purple or violet. Um, you guys are um, familiar with the violet flame, the, 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 the flame of transformation, the color, you know, one of the flames of healing because of that, right? Because it, it, it can transform anything. When black heals, um, 
color black actually because it has magnetic properties, right? Like essentially every black object that um, you would have even in a third dimensional world is going to have a propensity to draw things to it, right? So it like it, it attracts things. It's quite magnetic. It almost like sucks things into its orbit because it's so, so strong, right? Part of it is almost like it creates a center of gravity around it that things, beings, people kind of like flock to. So instead of emanating like white, black actually, uh, more often than not, it aggregates, right? It brings things into it, right? That's why, that's another reason perhaps why you guys think it is a very feminine color or like a feminine energy, at least from the spiritual yin-yang perspective. Because black has this power to draw things to it, one of the things that it does very well as it relates to healing is it can suck away things that are out of your body, it can suck away the things that are suboptimal, things that um, are the byproducts of the disease or some of the symptomology. It can literally just suck it in like a magnet or suck it away, right? So black is a very, very powerful healing tool and it is a tool for detox. Like it's really, really amazing when you want to detox. Um, black as a, as a flame, the black flame, has a propensity to cleanse on a very, very deep level and purify almost more so than the color white just because of how magnetic it is. And if you wanted to experience this propensity of the black flame, what I would suggest that you do is um, in a meditative state, you would want to imagine yourself standing in, in, inside of a very big black flame. Um, and, you know, that black flame would encapsulate you or surround you. And you would want to go body by body, right? You know, you have your physical body, you have your light bodies. And would ask that black flame to cleanse you. So it started at the physical level. Then you would go to the level of energy or the etheric level go to your etheric body. Then you would go to the emotional body. Then you would go to the mental body. And it's almost like you want to split yourself into these four bodies and imagine that the black flame is cleansing and sucking away all of the darkness, dirt, debris, blockages, distortions from each of these facets of you, right? And that's how you would quickly use the energies of the black flame for healing, right? So the black flame is not necessarily for mending tissues, right? That would be more of the golden flame. Uh, but the black flame can take away everything that is suboptimal. And, you know, because of that, what remains are all the optimal things in your body. Now, black flame works really, really well in combination with some other flames. So black and gold, for instance, are like a match made in heaven, literally. Um, they are really perfect because if the black is going to suck away all of the things that are uh, detrimental to you, uh, let's say that, I don't know, um, it could suck away the, um, I don't know, the energies of despair, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what that would do is it would create space in your body. And that space is actually really well filled up by the color gold and the golden flame. Now, I digress because we went a little bit into practices yet. And I wanted to give you a little bit more of the background and the foundations um, for the color black. So color black is an incredible um, resource if you're looking to create anything, uh, because it can be the powerhouse or the energy that powers all of your creation. It can be the energy that you can tap into for literally any kind of resource that you need. So very often you go through life being malnourished or being tired, like chronic fatigue is actually an epidemic. It's an, it's an epidemic within the human society. Now, there are many reasons why. But the beauty of color black is that because it contains every, literally every color of the spectrum within it, because it contains the full range of energies, as long as you power yourself with that color, as long as you allow yourself to tap into the resource of this color, your body is going to be able to take what it needs out of that infinite range and absorb the energies that it needs. It almost looks like... Um, um, essentially black having all these many rays, many rays of different colors, and you can tap into any of those rays um, as you're working energetically with this. Well, you know, while we're here, actually, let me give you a quick, quick practice um, if, if you're looking to um, power your body through the color black. Um, this can actually be done very quickly 
So once you get a hang of this practice, you would be able to charge yourself literally within 60 seconds. So, but for the first time, like uh, first couple of times, maybe as you're working with energies of color black, it would take you a little bit of time to get used to, uh, a little bit of time um, to just adjust to the energies. Um, what are the many facets of black you can work with? And by the way, we're going to go into the practice, but let me just uh, preface it with saying, so you can work with the golden flame, sorry, the black flame. The black flame is literally fire of the color black. You can work with uh, black waters or any black liquid, right? That's another facet. You can work with black smoke, right? So air that is colored black. I would say those, those three are probably the most potent energies um, of black that you have access to. Um, I'm getting a quick question from the collective of what's the difference of like, how would I know what I want to work with when? Well, the, uh, the answer is actually, it depends because as a person, you already have a certain predisposition for certain energies. Like you already carry within yourself particular energies, even in the zodiac sign, right? You may be a water sign, a fire sign, an earth sign, or um, very often you just have an affinity for things way above and beyond like things that, this, you know, things in, in astrology. Um, very often it's past life related, right? You may have um, in one of your past lives been working very closely with one of the elements. You may have been a priest or priestess. You may have uh, done offerings to fire, offerings to water. You may have lived by the ocean or, you know, in, in like in the Polynesia, for instance, or uh, somewhere in Hawaii and have just been connected to water. So depending on the experiences that you've had at soul level, you may already have a flavor of um, the element or like the, the type of element that you naturally gravitate towards, right? So there there's no right or wrong answer here. There is no right or wrong way to work with the black energies. You just need to figure out which one A you personally gravitate towards. There are some differences. Now, um, both the fire, the black fire or the black flame, and the black waters can be quite healing and cleansing. So if you wanted to cleanse yourself, you can use either one of those. If you wanted to charge yourself though, and if you wanted to fully get access to the energies um, and, and like use color black as almost like a battery, I actually recommend the waters or the liquid of black. Um, that is the, the, the type of energy that is the easiest to absorb, the easiest to digest, and the easiest to accumulate by your physical body. Um, the energies of the black fire, the energies of the black flame are a little bit more fleeting. Um, just like any fire, they're harder to contain and they're harder to accumulate. However, I will tell you this, fire also works quicker than water. So if you need like a really quick pick me up, like 10 seconds, get the energies of the black flame, not the black waters, if that makes sense. Um, now, the practice that I wanted to give you is this. As you start to connect to the energies of the color black, I recommend that you actually get to know both the black flame and the black waters, and the black smoke or the black clouds, right? Like all three of these facets. And you can do that over one meditation. You would first just imagine, you know, uh, close your eyes, you would, you know, get into a meditative zone. And you would want to imagine that you're standing in the middle of the black flame, like the, uh, like literally like the licks of flame all around you, surrounding you. And um, you want to drop that flame um, first into your, Actually, there are many, I would, I would recommend that you first drop it into your throat space. Um, and then imagine that it travels down your body, chakra by chakra by chakra. And then towards the very base of your spine, it splits into two small flames and travels down your feet and exits through the soles of your feet. But you almost like want to imagine that as it exits, it's never really too far out. It doesn't really leave too far, but it like stays close by by the soles of your feet, right? So like, and, and then you would just allow yourself to feel the energy of the flame warming you up, sharing its might, its power with you. So that's on the, on the flame side. Uh, the black gooey waters, the dark waters, you would want to imagine standing in them. You may imagine them as a black ocean, black river, doesn't really matter. You may imagine that there's like a black bathtub, right? Um, you may imagine them as a sphere as well, like sphere made of water. Um, 
you would just need to step into the sphere if you're imagining them as a sphere. Or if you're imagining them as an ocean, step into the ocean. All you need to go is, all you need to do is go knee deep. And then, uh, essentially, the water would be rising in your body. You would absorb the black water, so the black gooey substance, with the soles of your feet, and there it's going to be moving up. And what you want to do is you want to um, take it up to your heart space, and that's where it, um, you know, where it would settle. Um, that is how you would get to know the the format of um, color black in in its liquid state. And then for the uh, for the black smoke. In the black clouds, actually, all it takes is um, connecting uh, the higher chakras to it, right? So you would want to imagine that the black smoke enters your left ear and then your right ear, and then comes out from your third eye area and your throat area, right? So like enters through your left ear and right ear, comes out through your throat and through your third eye, and like it almost like needs to circulate, and you would just need to feel into the movement and just get to know the energies of the flame. Once you have done that attunement. You are ready and you are prepared to start working with the color black in your daily practice or when you are doing some serious energy work. What are some of the things that you would want to do in your daily practice? Like I said before, and I think we're finally getting to that, you may use the color black as a source of energy. You may use it to optimize your energy state. You may use it to feel less tired. Or if you are tired in the moment, you may use it like an espresso shot, energetic espresso shot. How would you do that? Again, because um, the energy of, of because color black is essentially all things to all people, all energies and all light encapsulated within this one majestic uh, stream of energy. You don't need to know what energy you're running low on, on in a particular day in order to optimize your state, right? I find that the hardest things for humans, for, for people on planet Earth, when they're trying to dissect why they're tired, is to try to understand what energy they're mal malnourished um, in, right? Like there's usually a stream of energy that they're not getting or that they're depleting faster than they're uh, able to replenish. And because of that, it's causing them to be tired. And uh, with the color black, it's actually really, really easy. What you would do is you would just imagine standing in that bathtub of black or the ocean of black, right, up to your knee, and abs keep absorbing this, um, you know, the energy with the soles of your feet. And you would notice that that black gooey substance is going to give you the energy exactly the color that you need. Some of you may actually notice that, yes, you are absorbing the black energy with the soles of your feet, but what's coming upstream, what's going up your uh, feet would be color green or emerald or blue or what have you, right? And that color would be traveling exactly to where it needs to go in your body to nourish you and to nurture you. So that is a quick exercise. Initially, when you when you do these, it would take you, you know, up to three minutes, sometimes five minutes to be able to full, be fully charged with this energy. But the more you work with the energies of color black, uh, the quicker this process is going to become. It's almost like your floodgates are going to become open and, you know, you're going to be able, it's, it's like being best friends with somebody, right? Like you just, um, you just um, understand each other at like, um, at half a sentence. And the same thing here, like once you're used to working with a particular kind of energy, it becomes very easy for you to absorb it and for your body to not reject it, but instead process it, right? So um, down the road, the more you work with this, it can be, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds for you to fully replenish your resource and you're going to feel a lot better. So, okay, uh, that's the one use case of color black. You can also use color black and the black flame in particular. Uh, and that goes back to your question of uh, when do we use the flame versus the, the waters. If you want to power your manifestation, you want to always use the flame. The flame is, and, and, and the energy of fire is something that we need to ignite things, to propel things into being, to create things out of nothing. And so um, the, the practice that I would recommend to you is this. Let's say you have a goal that you want to achieve. How do you speed up the manifestation of that goal using the energy of the color black? Here's how. You imagine that you are standing on your lifeline. Lifelines are actually, they just look like roads or they just look like pathways, right? It's um, energetically just looks like um, a straight line and you're standing on that straight line. Um, you would want to imagine your desired outcome as a sphere of energy. 
whatever color you know comes to you intuitively is the right color. Then what you would need to do is you need to place that color, right? Uh, uh, that sphere, right? The sphere that represents your intended outcome, right alongside your lifeline, right? Somewhere in front of you so you can see it. So you place that straight on top of this line that represents your life. And then you would want to imagine that there is a black flame right underneath it. And that black flame is starting to grow larger, 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 and it starts to fuel the sphere of energy that is your intended outcome. It's almost like when you're cooking things on a stove, right? There is that fire that, you know, is right underneath your frying pan, and it is heating up the frying pan. The same thing here, like the same principle applies here. The black flame is going to heat up that intended outcome and help magnetize it and amplify it. So um, I, I find that just the use of a black flame alone can speed up manifestation of things by three to five times. And the more you practice and the more you do that, the, the quicker mm, the energies are gonna work for you in particular. Another way to benefit from the energies that are fire um, on the black spectrum um, is to work with the energies of a black sun. I talk about the black sun quite often. There, there are chapters about the black sun in my book, right? The black sun is the hidden sun. It is the sun that, you know, is only spoken about in, in the very op uh, occult contexts usually. But the black sun is, is really the uh, very potent sun that contains a lot of keys. It contains to, the keys to youth and longevity. It contains the keys to creation, to manifestation, because it is the sun of all things and it's the sun of all energy. And as a solar consciousness, it belongs to the element of magic or the element of uh, creation that is fire, right? So it's, it's a very fiery energy. The central sun of the Milky Way galaxy is actually black. It's not the white sun. And that is the, it's, it's almost like the sun, it's like the central axis um, that the Milky Way revolves around. And um, it both absorbs things from the Milky Way that need to be archived or need to be restructured or need to be um, re resurfaced. It's, it's almost like um, when you need to remove and delete something, um, the central sun is going to absorb those energies because that is, when you throw things out, that is where things go to get recycled. When the energy in a current state, whatever state that is, is no longer needed, no longer necessary, or has outlived its usefulness, it goes straight back to the central sun of the Milky Way galaxy. That is for the Milky Way. Now, you know, we're not necessarily going into neighboring galaxies or remote galaxies uh, for this particular context, uh, for this particular conversation. But at the same time, the black sun, the central sun, is also really good at emanating things and creating things out of nowhere. Um, and um, because of that, if you build your connection with the black sun, you are going to find that a lot of the things that used to be hard for you before are going to start becoming easier. The black sun is intrinsically linked to our uh, right hemisphere, the right hemisphere of our brain and hence the left side of our body. And um, so as you're starting to work with a color black and specifically with a black sun, you will notice that as a byproduct, you start becoming a lot more intuitive. Your clairvoyance, clairaudience, all of the clairs are starting to open up. You are starting to see the future, right? So you may start seeing prophetic dreams or like you may start to develop all these like oracular quote unquote special abilities that are not so special. So there are a lot of things that the black sun is going to enable you to do. You will also be able to, so like time, time really blurs uh, for the black sun, you know, of the black sun is the master or the mistress of time, depending on, you know, black sun is actually both genders. It's not uh, masculine or feminine. It's, it's androgynous, perfectly androgynous, uh, but it exists outside of time. Uh, in a sense, it rules time. And I'm, I'm talking, uh, you know, not locally here, right? 
because um, I, I just got a whiff uh, from the collective, like, what do you mean? We thought Saturn was ruling time. I'm talking more macro level, you guys, right? I'm not talking solar system. I'm talking the, the gal galactic level. And because of that, um, as you start developing, um, so because black, the black sun rules time, as you start developing a connection towards it, as you start you know, creating ties between yourself and that wonderful um, energetic celestial object, you would notice that the time becomes blurry in the sense that you're able to look into the future, you're able to look into the past. Um, you um, may, as a result, also have um, start developing higher clearance as far as Akashic record, um, records are concerned, right? Like you'll be able to go to higher levels of access and gain higher levels of access to the Akashic records as you keep working with the black sun, right? And, and I know this is a little bit of a hodgepodge, but we're literally talking about the different sources of black and color of black that you could be working with um, in your immediate vicinity. And this episode would definitely not be complete if I didn't mention the black sun. How do you connect to the black sun? Um, I would say that probably the easiest way would be to imagine that the black sun is right atop your head or like right above your head. And it is showering you with an avalanche of light, a black light. And I know it sounds like counterintuitive, like when I say black light, but uh, the light of the black sun it has this like purplish black hue and it like it glimmers like black diamonds, if that makes sense. So it's not like completely gooey. It actually has facets to it, right? It's multifaceted, it's multi-layered. It's actually quite beautiful. Um, it's not just like pitch blackness. And um, so you would want to imagine that this like deep black with a slight purplish tint um, energy is coming through and it hits the um, right hemisphere of your brain. And then it kind of like uses that as a doorway into your system. And then you would want to imagine that um, it just trickles down, that energy just trickles down, and it should bypass every single chakra. So make sure that it there is a seat, uh, almost like a little, I don't know, throne, <laughs> if you will, for the black sun energy uh, to anchor into every single chakra that you have. And also please um, anchor the black sun um, into the earth star chakra, which is below your feet, right? Um, your eighth chakra or your, you know, chakra zero, depending on how you count, uh, you know, we can count up, down, up to up or up to down, but uh, your earth star chakra is below your feet and really, um, you know, helps anchor the energies of the black sun and connect them to the energies of the planet earth, mother Gaia, which enables you to then use those energies um, for your day-to-day -day life. Um, what are some of the other things that color black holds? Um, and I've already started mentioning those in the context of the black sun, but uh, the black sun is actually the key to abundance. You could gain any kind of abundance um, because again, the black is the color of everything or the everything space, right? Um, so you may work with um, the black sun and attract things towards you. The way that you would do that uh, would be as follows. Um, so the black sun is actually really, really good at helping you create copies of things that you want in real life. But here's like a quick practice that um, you know you can use if you want to help, if you want the black sun to help you manifest something in real life. So you need a, you would need to think of a representation of that thing that you desire. Now, if you want a physical object, it's very easy. Like if you want a car, a house, I don't know, a cat, um, it's very easy to imagine those things. But let's say you want something ephemeral like love or friendship or, I don't know, peace on earth. Um, you would need to come up with an, a representation, a visual rep re representation of that, almost like a symbol. And, you know, have an agreement with the universe that that symbol stands for love, friendship, or what have you. So you know, in a meditative state, you would imagine that you are connected to the black sun, right? Like with that, um, literally there's like this black sun in front of you. Remember the black sun is a space, a creative space of all energy. And so literally anything in existence that you could possibly think of already exists in the folds of the black sun. Or if it doesn't yet exist there, it can be produced there instantaneously. What you would want to do is you would want to reach into the core of the black sun 
And imagine that you are taking out of the black sun as if you were reaching into a bag or something. What you're taking out is a symbol, a representation of that thing which you want. Um, and this, it can be small, you know, enough so to, uh, that it can fit inside of your palm, inside of your hand. What you would want to do is you would want to bring that into your heart space, that little object. Remember, the black sun represents magnetism. It represents re universal magnetism, you know, planetary magnetism, galactic magnetism, all of the above. By taking an object made of the energy of the black sun, that object becomes magnetic. And once you place that representation, that symbol inside of your heart space, what it would do is it would create a gravitational pull of that thing towards you, right? Because you already have almost like an energetic double uh, or energetic copy of that thing that you want inside of your vessel, inside of your body. And so the universe would read it as, oh, this person alre is already that or already vibrates at that frequency. So your body is going to start naturally magnetizing things towards it. Black is also around, it is all about the depth of power, the depth of power that you hold, the depth of power that you are, right? And so sometimes, um, you know, the more you start working with the black energies, the more you would be faced with certain things about yourself that are preventing you from being in your full power, that are preventing you from being your full integrity. So in some ways, by working with the color black, you are attracting your most powerful version, the most powerful version of you towards you. And sometimes that means that, yes, you would need to go and do some shadow work. Sometimes certain shadows or certain um, aspects of, 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 you know, of yourself that have been fractured away from you through trauma would start staring you straight in the face the more you start working with the black flame you know, the black sun, etc. That is completely normal. That is this energy of all thing, literally mirroring things back to you so you can come into your own fullness. So just be prepared that on your path of exploring the color black, you may be faced with times where you must do shadow work, where you must do parts work. Otherwise, forward progress is impossible. Um, yeah, uh, so just, just remember that. Um, black is also a very honest energy. Uh, because of that, it actually requires full integrity, right? So you may notice that, you know, when you are in integrity with yourself and the, and the world, meaning you keep your word to yourself, you do this, the things that you said you were going to do because you promised yourself, like let alone promised everybody else, right? Um, you would notice that the energies of the black sun, the energies of the color black, start becoming your best allies. But the reverse is also true. If you break your word, uh, it's gonna, it may start being hard for you to work with energies of the black sun. It is just how these energies are stacked. It is what it is. And now it is actually, um, unfortunately, really, really sad that people usually feel compelled to keep the words that they give to others, a lot more so than they feel compelled to give the word, like keep the promises they give themselves. I will tell you, truly powerful people always, always keep the promises they give themselves. That is, you know, literally how they make it in life, right? And at soul level, for that matter. But like integrity is everything when working with the black flame and the black energies. Another thing that um, you may want to do, I'll give you like one last example of how you can work with these energies. Um, and then we can dive into questions, but it's kind of really, really important. Another thing that you can use um, the black ray, the black flame color black for, is helping you get rid of either suboptimal circumstances, certain things that you don't want, or certain, um, yeah, like symptomology or ailments, right? Um, and you're going to, for that, you're going to use the first facet of the color black, uh, which is like the color of no thing, right? Like you, you're going to use the vacuum facet of the color black. Now, should you be terribly concerned with which one you're tapping into? Not necessarily. It's a very intuitive process. The universe is extremely wise. You don't need to spell things out for it. The universe is going to give you the color black that you're meant to be working with. So here's, here's how it works. Like you would want to imagine that there is a black portal, right? And this black portal would literally represent the color black of no thing. 
And then you would think of a thing, like an impediment, an obstacle in your life, or something that is causing you pain or whatnot, something you just don't want. And then you would just want to imagine that this blackness, this dark, almost like mirror-like surface of the portal is sucking that thing out of your body or out of your life or out of your path, out of your journey and into itself, right? Remember again, the black is very magnetic. It wants to suck things out. It wants to take things away uh, from you, especially if you're willing to give them out. And so that is a beautiful propensity of the black energy that you can use um, you know, if there is something suboptimal, something, if there is something in your life that you don't want, and then just allow the process to happen and make sure that the entirety of that thing is gone. Because usually there are some ties, you know, uh, you know, certain things that you have may be tied to different parts of your body. It's almost like there are cords and you just want to make sure that all of these cords are gone, right? And, and that thing is sucked into the black portal. I wanted to see if the collective had any questions for me about the color black or any uses or anything that has been said during um, this session. As long as it serves the collective, I'm ready to receive the question. The question is, I have resistance around receiving the color black into my body. Um, a lot of the energies, uh, a lot of the practices that you mentioned um, require for me to allow it to go up my, you know, the soles of my feet or, you know, through, through um, you know, my right hemisphere. This feels to me um, like it's, it's not clean. It feels like it's a threat. It feels like I'm going to be uh, somehow tarnished by it or it's like inviting darkness into my zone. What do I do with it? Okay. Here's the deal, you guys. When I am talking about the energy of the black flame. I'm talking about the energy of our source consciousness, right? I'm not talking about entities here that are not of light. I am talking about the most pristine, high frequency color black you can imagine. Did I say that that color has the potential to create anything and everything? From the bubonic plague to peace in the universe. Yes, do I stand by that statement? One billion percent. However, as the color of everything, as the color of potential, as the color of power, black in and of itself does not create things. You are the artist. You are the creator. Color black is an instrument. It is up to you how you want to wield that instrument. Meaning, if you work with the energy of black, can you make a lot, can you, mat like, intentionally though, right? Can you manifest a lot of nasty things? The answer is yes, you could. But you are in control. Do I recommend that you do that? Absolutely not. There is payback and karma for every single action that you do. It is my job to warn you. However, However, because you are in charge and you're in command, if you have the keys to the greatest resource in the universe, why would you create evil things with it if you could create so much goodness? So my point is don't blame the tool. It's like, is the knife bad because it can cut your finger? No, the knife is a tool. You choose to cut a finger <laughs> Maybe you don't choose to cut a finger, but you know it can, that tool can be used to cut a finger accidentally, or it can be used to make you dinner that you really need, right? So a knife is not bad in and of itself. An axe is not bad in and of itself, right? It is a tool. It is what the wielder of the tool chooses to do with it that really defines the object. Black as a as a color, black as a flame, black as an energy is not at all negative, but it is everything. So when you are inviting black into your body, you're not inviting demons, God forbid. You're not inviting evil into your body. You are inviting this moldable substance that contains all life inside, that contains all light inside, that contains the entire spectrum of everything. 
So essentially, it's like the building block. It's like clay. You're like it's like inviting clay into your body, and then as a sculptor, you get to mold it into whatever thing you want. So no, inviting the high frequency black light into your body has nothing to do with inviting evil into your body. It has nothing to do with you know any of the demonic entities, any of those things. None of that, right? Again, you are in charge and you're in control, and that energy is not inherently good or bad or anything. It's just a resource. And it's up to you what you want to do with it. Right? So I think that where I was going with this is it's normal and natural to have resistance. But you need to understand that the reason you have resistance to color black is because you have been conditioned to associate it with certain things that are less kosher. In the same way that you have learned and been conditioned to associate white with goodness. They are, both of these colors, neutral. They are not one good and the other one evil, right? They are just building blocks of reality, right? And so if you have resistance, I invite you to open your mind right to deeper un to a deeper understanding right i don't know mother earth has a lot of things that are black like the earth itself is black like the soil right black brown deep brown whatever there you know crude oil is black does it mean all of these things are bad no there are a lot of black things that are incredibly fantastic like the night sky, is that bad? Obviously not. But there's just conditioning, right? And besides everything, third dimensional planets are planets of duality. So like, no, no wonder uh, you have been dealt this dualistic card. Um, the black flame cannot hurt you as an energy. It is not malicious. In fact, it's probably more benevolent than anything else, right? Now, of course, it is up to you. And, you know, if you know, despite everything that I say, you still feel like it's dangerous, then more power to you. Honestly, um, perhaps this is just not the modality or, you know, perhaps this is not the time for you to work with this energies, right? But perhaps there is a reason uh, of, of why there is resistance, but usually resistance comes from some type of trauma. And, you know, if, if you're curious around diving deep, perhaps some past life regressions with a specific intention to understand your own relationship with darkness and the color of black and what happened there, you know, may be interesting to you. Um, I'll take one more question from the collective around color black. Um, yeah. Um, the question is, as I'm taking the energy of the color black, let's say whether that's from the sun or, you know, the, you know, whether that's the river, it doesn't really matter. Is there such a thing as taking too much? No, actually. So usually, um, you know, like every flame is very different. Every energy is really, really different. Um, black is one of those energies that you cannot take too much if you tried. It is like a self-regulating entity. Um, as soon as your body has enough, um, you would notice energetically that the flow just stops automatically. Like you could not take more than, you know, 100% of what you could take. So um, do not worry about taking too much. Like, you know, with some, um, with some flames, you really have to worry. Like with the red flames, the red energies, you know, you really have to pace yourself. With the black energies, it's like automated. You really don't have to worry. Like there is no such thing as like being able to take too much because the universe is actually very wise about distrib distribution of resources. And black is an energy because it is literally a proxy or shall I say a precursor to anything it's a very, very valuable resource. Because of that, the universe is not going to give you more than you can carry and more than you deserve, frankly. So do not worry that you could take too much. Um, I would worry maybe about being able to take too little. Now, there are energy pathways, um, kind of like you can think of them as meridians, right, um, in your body. And these energies, energy pathways are geared towards you being able to absorb certain energies, you would need to build pathways in your body that would enable you to take the energy of the black sun or the, the black flame. Um, these pathways, for most of you, do not exist yet. 
Um, a lot of you have pathways that enable you to take golden energy. A lot of you take pathways that enable you to take um, blue energy and white energy, um, green energy also, but um, not so much with black. So you would want to almost imagine that your body now is a network of capillaries, almost like, or like little, um, you know, um, meridians, if you will. And these meridians specifically are geared, toward, geared towards carrying the black energies, right? So it's like your personal stream of this very potent, powerful black, um, black sun energy. One thing you, you um, would want to do is expand the diameter of these like little meridians or capillaries. And um, you would notice that that helps increase the throughput and it helps increase how much energy of the black sun you can hold. So essentially your capacity for holding power inside of your body, right? Because once something is inside of your body, it's like having it in your back pocket, right? It's always easy to then take that black energy and transfer it into any kind of energy. Again, a lot of that happens usually in the background. It happens intuitively. Um, and so you would take that and you would transfer that into any kind of energy, whether that is for healing, manifestation, you know, abundance, like what have you. And it would happen instantaneously. And as soon as the black energy is used for something else, it is replenished in your body. And that is the beautiful part. And it will keep becoming accumulated. So your job really is to grow these capillaries, to grow this network um, of meridians, if you will, and absorb more and more energies of this just life force. Um, and um, that way, your body can always be fully charged up and always have the building blocks it needs for whatever it needs to build, frankly. Alrighty, my darlings, I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've been watching this on YouTube, feel free to drop me questions in the comments. Sending you a big virtual hug. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.